Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel, lovely to see you again and thanks for joining me. Well today's Wednesday the 19th January and it's really quite a mild day down here in East Devon and I'm at a, a different uh, location uh, and one that I've not been to before and it's the woodland um, just beyond the village of Sulcan Regis which is above Sidmouth. So we're having a little wander and uh, see what's what shows up, what would like to be revealed to us all. So if you care to join me, you're most welcome. So my little friend Dangel has joined us today. And she's uh, a little bit off. She's sensing certain things. Uh, and I found that with the, some of the other animals around me. That they are a little bit off. There's something stirring in the energies making them a little um what's the word sensitive to the vibrations around us and certainly my cats are staying very close to home they don't want to go out for too long and they're spending an awful lot of time sleeping yes i know cats sleep a lot um, but mine in particular are snuggling up together and as I've said to you before that our guides, our spirit guides, our galactic guides don't always come in a, a human type form, they can come in animal form. So my two cats have said to me that they've come from the constellations of Lyra and Sirius, hence their names, and that they didn't want to come in human form because the density is too heavy for them. And that of a cat is much easier to deal with. So their brother and sister they carry 13 energy because of their birthday and the 13 energy is the divine feminine so I'm getting the sense that this divine feminine energy oh did he wants me to go up that way that's a bit hard on my knees Bubba but hey ho we'll give it a go <laughs> oh up we go creaky knees you want to go all the way up there go on then Show me the way. I'm letting her take the lead because I don't think either of us have ever been up uh, this pathway before. And I'm noticing the gorse. The lovely yellow of the flowers of the gorse. Uh, which seems particularly significant at the moment. So I'll check that out when I get back home because I know it's one of the bark flower remedies but it doesn't spring to my mind immediately what that is about I'm sure it's about strength and resourcefulness and uh, tenacity so oh there's a little orb um, yeah I'll tack it on the end when we get back off you go Baba Go on. Go on. Keep moving. Oh, we have some grass. Yeah. There she goes. Do you want to go all the way up there? Do you? It's a bit steep. Ah, all right, uh, this makes sense to me now. Um, many years ago, I visited Findhorn in Scotland. And I stayed a week there to do a workshop. And we were taken out one day in a little minibus, half a dozen of us or so, to this gorgeous woodland. And there was a, uh, 
a gushing, really gushing stream that came down through the Scottish mountains. And the water was brown because of all the peat in the soil. And the person who took us there said, just be very careful when you are um, wandering off. Don't go too far because the veil is very thin at that location. And uh, sure enough, I went up a little pathway about this sort of width, but down to the right was a sheer drop and up to the left was very very steep with uh, really lots of wood woodland and trees and I got to a certain point just like the angel the doggy just did and a voice said to me don't go any further it was quite firm and I thought well I'm hearing things but I've learned to pay attention to voices in my head <laughs> over the years um, and then it said it again and once more so I heard it three times don't go any further and I'm glad that I didn't because when I returned to the group of people I was with they all reported similar sensations in various different parts of the location So we sat for a while and we, on the edges of this gushing stream or river and uh, relating our tales and stories to each other. And a number of us saw some things across the other side of the stream and I thought, oh, shall I tell them <laughs> what I'm seeing? And then one of them said what they saw and it was exactly what I saw which was a unicorn and also some Roman soldiers but couldn't see all of the Roman soldiers because their legs were sort of in the earth so that said to me that the soil had dropped over the years uh, intervening years from when they were around So we notice what we notice and if there's a, a warning issued then we must pay attention to it and if you don't the first time it'll get repeated so there may be three times where you hear the same words and you know that is the sign for you to pay attention to what it is you're hearing. And because animal senses are far more um, acute than we humans, I'm letting the little angel dog lead the way. And if she stops and doesn't want to go any further, then I pay attention to that. And it's not just because she's tired or she's stubborn. She senses something that I can't see or hear but then I get my antenna working and I can sometimes pick up the same thing as well oh look see this beautiful gorse again it's very Stunning, stunning yellow. And yellow is to remind us of the sunshine in our lives, the light within us, our solar plexus, sun center, solar center. And if we look back over, whoa, in the distance there. The sunshine is there. The clouds may obscure a bit of it, but the sunshine is always there.
So if you've been feeling stuck, that you can't move forward, you can't move backwards, you can't move forwards, you're halted in a way, rather than getting him, um, frustrated by that, it feels like the energy of today says, halt, stop, stay a while, as Jed Clampett would say. Stay a while, sit a while, and just absorb that beautiful yellow energy as it shows up in our lives. Because the sun has changed, the the energy of it has changed. It's it's more powerful. It's stronger. And it's sending codes to us. So the light codes, not just from the sun, but from other points out there in the old cosmos, to wake us up, to activate those light codes within us that we were born with. And that's come down through eons through our DNA, through our family cultures. And I don't know about you, but in my family, I'm the very black sheep. <laughs> and I've always had a, a connection with Upstairs, spirit, the galactic, for which I've been ridiculed and humiliated all my life. But I just get the sense now that even though I've had that negative energy directed at me, I'm holding on. Because it's not a belief. I don't believe it. I know it. And that might sound arrogant. But the knowingness, that inner knowing. Ah, look at this, isn't that beautiful? That what you've, that what has sat within you for such a long time and has never really altered has to be the truth. And so with these light codes blasting the planet, lots of those sleeping beauties will have a shocking awakening because they're being activated. they won't know how to deal with it, they won't know what to think of it, they might think they're going bonkers. But I hope they will always say, also say, you know all that rubbish you spouted Amanda for 60 odd years, <laughs> well, I think you might be right in some of it. And uh, let's talk, let's have a a heated debate <laughs> or a, a lovely open-hearted conversation because when you think that we all volunteered to come and some of you might say what I didn't choose my family I certainly didn't choose my parents well it's worth thinking about that if you did what are the lessons that you've learned have you learned them are you willing to learn them or ignore them or just keep repeating them so the same situations keep showing up with people in different bodies
challenging you yet again. So if you lovely viewers enjoy my ramblings, both verbally and perambulatory, you might like to put some questions in the comments. Some long held queries you might have about life and the universe and I can address them in another video and uh, share my insights with which you may not agree but at least it's out there in the open something to ponder on Because I know that when I was very busy practicing shiatsu about 20 years ago, I had a lot of clients. And a lot of the time they only came once. And I was so disappointed. I thought, oh dear, I haven't done it right. Or uh, they didn't think much of it. Uh, or it didn't work. And then in a uh, one of those aha moments after some deep thought and meditation, an answer came back saying they only needed one treatment. And yes, it might not have worked there and then, but you've triggered something off within them, which won't be activated for maybe another 10, 20 years. I thought, oh, isn't that interesting? What goes around comes around. So because it's all energy, and shiatsu means finger pressure, so she is finger, atsu is pressure, and it's akin to acupuncture, but we don't use needles just press into points. So I may find that clients from 20 or more years ago are now being awoken and activated because of one treatment that they had with me. And so I found I had to let go. I had to detach from oh I've got to fix everybody and I'll make them all well immediately and that's my mission in life aren't I good aren't I clever because it's not about that as time doesn't exist these things happen in divine timing and when they're meant to but I'm not expecting a whole slew of emails from <laughs> previous clients saying, Hey, remember me? No, nothing like that. It's just, uh, uh, thank you, universe. Thank you for that opportunity. Uh, and then turning it around. They may have triggered something in me, which is only active now in my life. Have you ever thought about that, Amanda? Oh, well, just now. Yeah. Which way are we going, Diddy? Yeah, oh, back through the kissing gate. Okay. Go on in. Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Oh. And one thing I've realised just in this last month or so, when we talk about cycles, uh, 
in our whoops in our lives astrological cycles I have just or I'm coming to the completion of a Saturn cycle in my life which is approximately 28 years this is called a kissing gate by the way so uh, if there's twos of yous one stands that side and one stands this side and they kiss across it and then the other one can come through well it's a love gate a kissing gate yeah so um you may or may not have heard of the Saturn return which is when you're approximately 28 when you're approximately 56 55 56 and if you're lucky when you're in your 80s but that isn't the only cycle of Saturn that is just from uh, the moment you were born when chronologically you have the returns but there can also be within your lifespan other Saturn cycles so you might have a job for 28 years you might be in a marriage for 28 years you might live in a home for 28 years and then it all changes it ends it it transposes and the Saturn rules Capricorn which is the energy we're in at present until I think 21st when it moves into Aquarius you might like to track back over the last 28 or so years how things have gone in your life so on the in a collective sense it's about control governments big business big farmer that's p h a r m a it could also be f a r m e r because the way that our food is grown and harvested and packaged and then you can break that down the Saturn cycle into periods of seven so seven years ago 14 years ago 21 years ago 28 years ago or thereabouts what happened in your lives so we're moving into this lovely new energy as we step into the Sun in Aquarius in the next couple of days which is fast very very fast it's air energy whereas Capricorn is Earth it's slow it's plodding it's long term it's status quo don't want to change anything we like it as it is whereas Aquarius is really fast ruled by Uranus so there are changes afoot that can come along out of the blue very very quickly uh, can be quite shocking uh, unexpected even devastating for some and for others it's a dream come true and if you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and working through this Saturn cycle plodding through because it will stay in one area of your life for a very long time And it's moving out of that area now on a collective level 
into something that's electrifying because it Uranus rules electricity it's that ta -da moment you know it's uh, Uranus is the sky god so when we send out our prayers heavenwards whatever you are praying about or meditating about or asking about can come in very very quickly not necessarily in <laughs> the way that you expect it to show up because it is unexpected oh, I'm really enjoying this walk it's just gorgeous lovely energy bright and sparkly like that little girl she's coming Yay. good girl uh. ah this is what I wanted to show you I passed it early on now look at this for a fairy mound eh look at this for a fairy mound and there's a bit of a a puddy muddle and around it. But look at this, isn't that fabulous? Whoa. Whoa. And the sun shining on it is like activating the fairy energies. And if we look really closely, we see lots of empty seashells. There we are. There's no sound except the wind. As we're moving on, beautiful holly trees, sacred holly. I was given in a message some years ago from Mildreus, who is my galactic family about this collapse of structures in the world 
and he said that many souls were being incarnated that would walk the corridors of power but who came with a very different energy so a lot of people have been feeling hopeless and helpless and frustrated at the malarkey of the rulership but he let it be known that these volunteers have come fully trained, fully programmed in the positive for, I'm hearing the word executing, executing the changes that will be brought to the planet. So. Some of the doom and gloom merchants are, merchants are saying, oh, it'll take ages, it'll take years, it'll take um, generations to restore planet Earth and to bring about these new ways of doing things. And yes, there may be certain structures that that is so. However, with this Aquarius energy, and not just the sun being in Aquarius, but other planets moving in there as well, a lot of these things will be in quantum time. So those who haven't done the research or explored the alternative way of looking at things and there's more than one alternative way of looking at things uh, but the new earth the template is already set up it's already there in the ethers So it's like a hologram is already present of new earth and everything that is needed to generate this new place, uh, realm, dimension, uh, parallel universe. And so those of us who research, study, embrace the quantum energies, less the particle, more the wave, can see these things brought to fruition way faster than those who in their 3D minds seeing it in a 3D timeline because in the 3D timeline it would take ages but in the quantum way of doing things Tis done, tis done, tis done. It's already done. Well, all we need to do is hop up there into that reality. And you might say, what do you mean all you need to do? Well, it is. All you need to do is set an intention That you wish to live, exist, expand, evolve, 
in this new earth, on this new earth, within this new earth, however it may manifest for you. Unplug from the 3D matrix of doom and gloom. Because every ounce of energy you give to that helps it to grow in the negative. So when you unplug, detach, remove yourself, go for a walk in the woods. Set your intentions to exist through the quantum energies in a very different place that is welcoming us all I'll put the kettle on, shall I? Up to love. See you soon. Bye. Here's the PS I promised you about uh, the gorse. So I've found the bark flower remedy information and it says, Each day, each moment, we express in our outlook hope or pessimism. We either affirm life or deny it. There are times when our experience of life has led us to despair when we lose all hope. And yet we continue to live. We are in a half-life of chronic resignation, for we, for we have lost heart, as Bach put it. In such a state, no treatment will effect an improvement without a new arousal of the will to live. Only when the life force has been reanimated can we hope to improve. Dr Bach recognised that this condition occurred to people who had been ill for a long time, those habituated to their problems, who expected no further improvement, people stuck in a rut. To find a remedy for them, he looked for a plant which brought the strength of sunlight. They look as though they needed more sunshine in their lives to drive away the clouds, he said. The strength of purpose to overcome difficulties and the kind of protection that would give the courage to fight. This plant was gorse. Gorse carries the strength of the sun in its golden yellow flowers. When it is in full bloom early in the spring, it has a charge of brilliant intensity that awakens to land, to new hope and new life. Many other spring flowers echo this yellow. They bring in the yellow light combined with the blue winter darkness. It leads to the fresh green of summer. But gorse has been in flower a little throughout the winter, withstanding the cold and the snow. Even at the solstice, it was a signal of, of new life. Hope may grow faint, but it never dies. This resilience is given protection to prevent animals eating the flowers. Gorse has mighty spines which defend it, and those who shelter in its undergrowth, it is a very lion of golden strength, certainty and confidence. And there's an affirmation with this uh, flower remedy which says, now let us think about those who have been ill for some time or even a long time. There is again every reason to be hopeful of benefit, either improvement or recovery. Never let anyone give up hope of getting well. And the indication says, Very great hopelessness, they have given up belief that more can be done for them. Under persuasion or to please others, they may try different treatments at the same time assuring those around that there is so little hope of relief. So hopefully this message of the gorse that we saw earlier on in the video will help some of you who are going through this feeling of hopelessness and despair. Just seeing a photograph or a, a video of the plant itself will actually activate the light energies within you.